This equation is only true when x is equal to 0 or 7 minus x is equal to 0. So what we need to say here is that x is equal to 0 or 7 minus x is equal to 0. And then if 7 minus x is equal to 0, then x is equal to 7. This is the answer to 1.1.1. That's all we are supposed to do. And 1.1.2, on the other hand, we have a quadratic equation. 3x squared minus 2x minus 6 is equal to 0. We're supposed to find the value of x correct to two decimal places. So as soon as we see correct to two decimal places, we know we're going to use the quadratic formula. So that is x is equal to minus b, which is minus 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared. So we have minus 2 squared minus 4ac. The value of a is 3 and the value of c is minus 6. And we are dividing everything by 2a, which happens to be 3. So if you put that in your calculator, you're going to get x is equal to minus 1.12 or x is equal to 1.79 that is the values of x correct to two decimal places 1.1.3 is quite an interesting one we have 3 minus x multiplied by x plus 7 being less than 0 this inequality is already factorized so we don't have to do much here we can go straight to the critical values we can say that 3 minus x is equal to 0 or x plus 7 is equal to 0. And then here we're going to have minus x being equal to minus 3. So x is equal to 3. And on the other side, we're going to have x being equal to minus 7. And just like that, we have our critical values 3 and minus 7. So let's see if x lies between 3 and minus 7. If it doesn't lie between 3 and minus 7, then it will lie outside. So how do we then test if it lies between minus 7 and 3? We take a number that is between minus 7 and 3 and substitute it in our inequality. If our, if our inequality holds, then we know that our solutions lie in that range. So between minus 7 and 3, let's take 0. So we're going to have, we're substituting it here. Uh, we're going to have 3 multiplied by 7 being less than 0. So 21 is not less than 0. So we can see that our solution is not between minus 7 and 3. So it must be outside that range. What do I mean by that? x needs to be greater than 3 or x needs to be less than minus 7. For these values of x, our equation, our inequality is going to hold. Let's move to 1.1.4. We have the cube root of 32 being equals to 8 to the power 3x multiply by 2 to the power 6x. So when you have a question like this, the first thing you should be looking at is writing all the numbers with the same base. We have 2, 8, and 32. If you want to write those numbers with the same base, then the number to go for is 2. Let me show you how. Here we're going to have 3, and then the root of 2 to the power 5. 32 is just 2 to the power 5. Being equals 2, instead of 8, we're going to have 2 to the power 3 multiplied by 2 to the power 6x. So on the left-hand side, we're going to have 2 to the power 5 divided by 3. Being equals to 2 to the power 3 multiplied by 3x, that is 9x multiplied by 2 to the power 6x. So 2 to the power 5 divided by 3 is equal to 2. Same basis, we can just add the exponents, 15x. 
So obviously we're gonna drop the basis and equate the exponents. Five divided by three is equals to 15 X. So X will be equals to five divided by three divided by 15. So the value of X here in 1.1.4 is one divided by nine. And just like that, we have the answer to 1.1.4. 1.1.5. Let's take a look at this one. We have x minus 4 minus 2 square root of x minus 1 being equals to 0. Let's take these to the right hand side. We're going to have x minus 4 being equals to 2 square root of x minus 1. And then because we have this square root, it's better we square both sides. So on the left hand side, we're going to have x minus 4 squared. And then on the right hand side, we're going to have 4 multiplied by x minus 1. And then let's solve the left hand side. That will give us 8 squared minus 8x plus 16 being equals to 4x minus 4. So x squared minus 8x minus 4x that is minus 12x and then 16 plus 4 uh, that is plus 20 being equals to 0. Factors of 20 that when we add we get minus 12 that is minus 10 and minus 2. So we're going to have x minus 10 multiplied by x minus 2 being equals to zero it should be easy to see now that x can be equal to 10 or x can be equal to 2 but we need to check here whether all this solution holds why am i seeing that uh, we had a square root initially here and then we squared both sides so that introduces solutions that might not be necessarily true on the original equation if we substitute 10 we're going to have 10 minus 4 minus 2 square root of 10 minus 1. So that is 9. So this is 10 minus 4, which is 6. And then minus 2 multiplied by 3. This is equal to 0. So 10 holds. Let's see if 2 is also going to hold. If we substitute 2, we're going to have 2 minus 4 minus 2 multiplied by 2 minus 1. So that's just square root of 1. So we have 2 minus 4, that is minus 2, and then minus 2, which is not equal to 0. So 2 is not a solution to this equation. Yeah, we need to be aware of that when we square both sides. We introduce solutions that might not necessarily be true. Let's move to 1.2. We're supposed to solve for the following equations simultaneously. Uh, the first equation we have x so that is 1.2 we have x minus 2y being equals to 1 so x is equals to 1 plus 2y i can call this equation 1 why am i writing why am i writing x in terms of y because if i write y in terms of x then i'm going to divide by 2 which will get messy so it's better I just make x the subject of the formula. And then the other equation, we have x squared minus xy plus 2y squared being equal to 2. So I'm going to substitute, I can call this equation 2 and say that I'm substituting equation 1 into equation 2. So that will look like the following. In place of x squared, I have 1 plus 2y squared minus in place of x 1 plus 2y multiplied by y plus 2y squared being equals to 2. So what is 1 plus 2y squared? Uh, that will give you 1 plus 4y plus 4y squared and then minus y minus 2y squared plus 2y squared minus 2 being equals to 0. So I have 
4y minus y. That is 3y. And then minus y squared plus 2y squared. That is 0. So here I'm going to have 4y squared plus 3y. 1 minus 2. So that is minus 1 being equals to 0. So that is what I need to factorize. If I do that, I'm going to have 4y. And then here I have y. And then we're going to have 4y minus 1, y plus 1 being equals to 0. So it is easy to see here that y is equals to 1 divided by 4, or y is equals to minus 1. What is the value of x when y is equals to 1 divided by 4? x is going to be equals to 1 plus 2 multiplied by 1 divided by 4. So x here is equals to 3 divided by 2. On the other hand, x will be equals to 1 plus 2 multiplied by minus 1. So x is equals to minus 1. That is the answer to 1.2. Let's do 1.3 in a separate video.